Hello and welcome to the Liz Experiment YouTube channel. This is the channel where I share field notes from my attempt at trying to architect my best life. I'm coming to you this week from Billingshurst, which is in West Sussex, which is in England, which is in the UK. I think I have all of those different taxonomy levels correct, but if I don't, please let me know. Basically, I'm here in England and I am house sitting for two beautiful basset hounds and very mischievous, mischievous, you can probably hear them barking in the background because they're fighting. Um, and sneaky basset hounds named Penelope and Mildred. I recorded a video with them earlier this week. I'll provide a link here below so you can see it. They're adorable. They're incredibly lazy, but also, like I said, very sneaky. And they cause a lot of mischief. So we'll talk about that more in the show upcoming. Oh, and expect to hear barking. And if I get pulled away, I'm sorry. I'll, like, pause the video and try to, like, pop like paste videos together. You guys get it. So what did I learn this week and what have I been working on? There are two, like there are two in my first learnings, there are two learnings. That's just weird, but I'm going to go with it. I learned that first people are listening. And second, my thoughts on privilege are resonating and, and are not misplaced. And so I had a friend who sent me a lovely email, um, with her thoughts on the video that I, I posted last week in my weekly update. Again, I'll, I'll share that link uh, below in the info for this video. And I just thought that her response was so well put that I wanted to share it with everyone. I, I To give some context, I had been thinking about privilege and uh, my own privilege and, and how does that exist and how do I carry that and how do I work with that? And it's just an ongoing personal exploration. And her thoughts on my thoughts were, and I quote, I want you to know that from my perspective, as another incredibly privileged white woman, what's deeply offensive is when people are defensive and in denial that privilege has anything to do with their success or their place in the world. I certainly don't hear anything like that in you. This was incredibly comforting to hear. I hope that she, well, I know I'm, I think she's correct, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I just would love to hear more thoughts on privilege from everybody, especially with what's going on in, in uh, my home country, the United States. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, and why not start it here? The other part of her uh, email was her suggestion that we lead with open-heartedness, compassion, and true self. And so that was something I, I learned this week and I really took to heart. The second Thing I'm like, is it the second or the third? You, you confuse it a little bit with the double learning, whatever. Um, the second thing I learned this week, I was walking the dogs and there's this one park. Oh, excuse me. There was a okay, there was a delivery and I, I opened the door and she provided a package. So that was all good. So the second thing I learned this week, I was walking the dogs in a local park where they can be walked off lead. I learned that they say lead here instead of leash. Um, and I was doing that and we were having, having this idyllic kind of English countryside walking the basset hounds and they jumped straight into this ditch that was full of mud. And yeah, I kind of, um, kind of was like, I flipped out a little bit. I was like, really? You had to jump in the mud? Uh, but I was the only one that was shook by this. You know, I was the only one who was kind of like, that's what dogs, everybody else was like, that's what dogs do. I was like, whoa, I'm the worst pet sitter ever. Like the dogs jumped in the mud and they were like, everybody I met along the walk, they were like, that's just, that's how dogs are. So I kind of learned to um, relax in that regard. You know, dogs are dogs. We are people are people, everything. It's all good. You know, the third thing I learned this week was I read this article um, from, it's a, I'm reading it right now, Rob Dix, D-I-X dot com, and it's called Location Independence, and he describes his eight years, him and his wife's eight-year journey being location independent, and it was a truly inspirational article. Um, mostly what I learned from it was that I don't have to have it all figured out in this first year or this second year of what I'm doing. Um, I don't need to know how I'm going to make money or where I'll be traveling or have it scheduled. I don't have to do it right. There is no right way to do it. I'm doing just fine. Uh, and that was a really cool, that was a really like that, that article and that lesson learned led to most of the rest of them, which is the fourth, I think I'm on now. 
I kind of learned and watched myself slip into this sort of vibe of continuing, but even in a deeper level to notice what fills me up, what I need and where I strive and how to make an environment that's right for me. Uh, and that's, you know, been important as I thought about the fifth learning, which is, um, I previously, or, you know, I still kind of, I guess, am co-host of a, a podcast called Adrift on Purpose. I'll provide a link to that as well. Um, and we haven't recorded in a while and there was, we haven't recorded in a long while and we got a really great email from somebody who was listening to some of the episodes and was really inspired. And we were kind of thinking about, Hey, should we pick up recording again? Because obviously I don't have enough on my plate, Liz, but, um, but still what I learned is like my passion for that podcast in our, our mantra for it, which is living a life of purpose versus one of obligation. It's not the same as it once was. And I learned that's okay to think, it's okay not to do it if it doesn't fill me up. Like I said, it's related to the previous lessons learned. And finally, I'm learning what it's like to live in a smaller village in the English countryside. So a lot of lessons learned. Let me talk a little bit about how I worked on each of those lessons. So um, the suggestion about open-heartedness, compassion, and leading with true self it's something that I worked on. Anytime you're with pets, I, I mean, you're just working on that. You know, I love them. They're adorable. They're cute. This is their home. Um, I was meeting their uh, family, their hosts, their homeowners, and their family. And, and at, in those moments, I continued to lead with just open heartedness and compassion. And it wasn't always perfect. I, I need to say that because there are moments where it's like, Liz is this walking open hearted. No, there's some snarky, some hate in my head, no doubt. But, um, when I was conscious and when I allowed myself to be conscious of it, I would turn to compassion, open heartedness and true self. When the dogs did dogs, th- dogs, things, when the dogs did dog things, I really worked on letting go. For instance, Penelope just walked outside and is digging the hole in the yard. What am I going to do? She's a basset hound. That's what they do. You know, and she's pretty freaking cute doing it. What are you going to do? Just let it go. As far as the inspiration from the blog post, I really started opening myself up to potentials and signs and possibilities and thinking about in October and November, I have a couple months in between house sits and I'm like, what do I need? What fills me up? Where do I want to be? Um, where do I want to go? And I started to hone in on, you know what? It's great being in Europe. I love it. But uh, the time difference is really hard when my business partner is in LA. It just is. I could use a break from that. I could use a break from watching pets. I'd love to sit in a house, like watch somebody's house and not have to take care of their pets. Sure. But pets are great, but they're, they're like people, you know, they're a lot. So I'm, um, thinking I don't want to do that in October, November. So I'm thinking, okay, somewhere that's close to the U S but somewhere that's international. What about Mexico? So I was laying in bed last night thinking about, Hey, where should I go? Should I go to Mexico city? Should I go to Tulum? Should I go to Puerto Vallarta? Where should I go? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this up to the universe. And once I let go and did that, I woke up the next morning and in my, well, then I, I should say, I get, I'm going to give this up to the universe. The universe, send me a sign. And when I did that, I woke up with an email in my inbox from a friend in Mexico city saying, I would love to see you. And I took that as a clear sign as something I should explore further. I have this fantasy of like taking a month of Spanish classes because I love learning that language. It filled me up. It made me feel whole. Um, and in doing so in a city, in somewhere that's close that I could work, that's that guys has good internet, et cetera, et cetera. So I really, really started working on those things. By the way, if you know somebody in Mexico who needs their house looked after, you let me know. Um, the other thing I worked on was being honest. I talked about the podcast earlier and, uh, not necessarily the passion, not being there anymore. And I've been working on being honest with myself about that, the being honest with my co-host about that, just being honest with people about myself and others about pretty much all of it. Um, and that's a conscious effort. I think we try to sugarcoat things cause we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We can't hurt people's feelings. They're their feelings. They're in charge of them. Um, I can't make anybody feel anything. So 
being honest is at least leading with my true self, which is what we learned at the top of the show, right? And finally, I am learning what it's like to live in the countryside of England. I'm learning that crisps are what they call potato chips and chips are what the, what crisps are what they call potato chips. Chips are obviously French fries, the cash point, so the ATM, I think I mentioned that in my last video. So I'm learning those things, but I'm also kind of learning, I don't know, just the train schedule and how grocery shopping works. And there's so the, all these like nuanced differences, like the milkman and the, it's just a really cool experience. And as um, I had a lot of meetings this week, but I'm hoping they won't have as many next week so I can get out and explore more. But I'm really looking forward to, uh, to doing that, to just being here for longer than two weeks and spending my time in the same place. So that was a long one for me for some reason, maybe because I'm not done with my coffee yet, but that's really it. If you um, like this video, give it thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to get these videos in your inbox every week. I would love to hear from you what you're interested about or what you're interested in, in someone architecting their best life and what other things you'd like to hear about on the show, because I, I don't mind talking to myself, but I also want to help you know more about what you're interested in with somebody who lives out of a couple suitcases. So let me know. Next week, I'll be back here in Billingshurst, UK or West Sussex or what have you. And until then, thanks for watching. Thank you.